Welcome. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Daisy. I'm the librarian and the library director. And this is a workshop on using Zotero, which is um, a free tool that helps you save, organize, and share your references. So I'm going to spend about, I think, maybe 20 minutes showing the tool. And then if you have any questions or you want me to show different aspects of it, or you have questions maybe about how it could be used, or um, you want to give me situations and ask how I might use it, um, we can do that at the end. And um, I do think it's important just to cover, because sometimes this can confuse students. Usually when I come into graduate classes to talk, um, the faculty member wants me to talk about research, talk about the library resources, talk about those aspects of research, and then talk about Zotero. So sometimes because I'm showing all these journal databases first, there's a little confusion about what Zotero actually is. So um, it is a tool, it helps you save these references. And I'm gonna show you like about five different ways that you could kind of grab the reference information from wherever you are. It can also save the PDFs of the articles or other files that are attached. So not only do you have all that bibliographic metadata, like the author, the journal, the page numbers, you also have the file to go back to and read. And it does that better than a tool that um, we're kind of phasing out RefWorks, which uh, we subscribed to many years ago. It actually, in my opinion, works a lot better to attach the files automatically. So that's one reason I like it. Also, it's free. Um, it allows you to add notes to any of the references you save. So if you're doing research or your students are doing research um, and they wanna add notes, uh, really create an annotated bibliography. Um, it can create, this is what people love the most about it, it can aut automatically export reference lists from any of your folders of references um, in a multitude of formats. Um, I think most, any format you would need. Um, and there's even, I believe, ways if it doesn't have a format you need, like if you're writing for a very specific journal, there's ways that you can um, customize it to follow the journal format. Um, and it also integrates with Word, Microsoft Word, and with Google Docs, um, which, and it integrates a little easier than this, the older tool that we used to promote. So um, I'm gonna try to show both today, at least show you how it kind of works, uh, your Zotero can work when you're in those word processing programs so that like as you're writing, you can add a citation from your Zotero libraries, add the parenthetical, or if you're in some kind of style that uses endnotes or footnotes, it, it will help you do that too. So that's what it does, what it is. What Zotero isn't is a research database. So, um, You'll see a search box in your Zotero uh, account when you set it up, but you can't use that to search for articles. And this is where sometimes students get confused because I'm throwing so much at them um, when I come into classes to talk about research and people see a search box and they wanna start finding things. Zotero can't help you find new information. When you search Zotero, you're only searching what you've already put in your library. So sometimes I tell students to think of Zotero as like a virtual file cabinet. You know, maybe at one point people used to print out or make photocopies of a lot of their research and put it into different folders. It'll allow you to organize your research into folders. And then it's almost like a I don't know, an AI secretary that then will help you format those references in any citation style that you want. So that's what it is. If you are looking to kind of find information, find articles, find research, um, definitely go to the library website. There's databases there. Um, most of the people here, here now know about that or go to Google Scholar or some other search engine. Um, Zotero won't help you with that. So um, the first thing you're gonna need to do to um, start using Zotero is to um, go to um, zotero.org and download uh, the tool. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. 
Um, you know, obviously I've down, I've downloaded it for Windows. I did not as a St. Peter's employee, this, this is more for faculty listening. I did not need IT to um, authorize it on my laptop, like some, some software would require. Um, and download the, um, the software and, and it'll, you know, run, run you through a process to put it on your machine. And then you also want to download the Chrome connector. If you're in Chrome, like I am Google Chrome, if you're in another web browser, Safari, Microsoft Edge, or Firefox, you would be prompted at the, um, it would detect that and it would prompt you to install this connector for your browser. This is a handy thing that I'm gonna show that will let you um, put references into your Zotero account directly from a web page. Um, and it's pretty cool. So now I'm going to switch and I might have to stop and share again and show you what it looks like once you have Zotero on your computer. So can you can you see my Zotero page? Um, I see the download thing, the Zotero 6 for Windows and Zotero connector, but that's uh, it. Oh, okay, thank you. Let me, okay. Since it's on a different program, I have to share it separately. Thank you. Jennifer for helping me out. Okay, now do you see um, a sort of boring white page with file yes. folders? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So this is what you will see um, if you have a Zotero. And when you open Zotero, you won't see any folders yet, but you will see my library. So on the left, this is... Um, and you can, um, everyone starts with, with a library at the top, a top collection, and you can uh, create folders under that to organize your research if you wish. You could just leave everything in, you know, the open library when you, when you um, put it in there, it's up to you. Um, you will automatically have a few folders that are generated. Those are unfiled items, so things that maybe you haven't put into folders, um, Zotero will put into unfiled items. So um, if you're organizing things, that can be useful. And duplicate items. Um, I have a lot of duplicates because I've been playing with uh, downloading things in different ways. So duplicate items will also be a folder. And uh, so that's, that's basically it. Um, any folder that you have as you fill uh, with, with um, references, you can generate a bibliography just by right clicking on it and creating a bibliography from the collection. So that's kind of the thing that people often like to see. Um, and I did one earlier, you just click um, create bibliography from, from, the, from the collection and it will um, save it in a rich text format, HTML, or copy it to the clipboard or print it. Um, and the, you can see the basic styles that are loaded into Zotero, American Chemical Society, American Medical Association, but the ones that we see the most at St. Peter's, APA 7th edition, um, occasionally I've seen Chicago style and Modern Language Association are all there, the three kind of biggies. Um, and I'm gonna show you later how to um, find more. So you can add folders over here. That's a good way to get things organized. Um, and then these tools um, have to do with adding uh, adding items. So I'm going to go through five different ways to put stuff, to put references into your Zotero account. So the first one is you can add a reference manually. This is the one I, I hope people use the least because it's not making the tool look that easy. But um, 
if you have, you know, let's say a book that's in your hand, and I'm going to show you an easier way to add a book, um, and and you you want to add it that way, or I think something more that it's is not in a database, like maybe you use a film, or maybe you use a letter or an interview. Um, if you click, it will give you um, fields to enter. And this takes a little while, but it will take you through the title, the author, the type, the date, where you accessed it, the archive. If you know the call number, you know, some of the, any fields that you don't have, you leave blank. So that's one way to um, enter into uh, enter into um, items into Zotero, pardon me. You can enter them manually. Another way you can do it is, um, and can you see I'm on an Amazon uh, page here for a book, Economy yeah. Hall? Okay, good, that switched over. So um, if you have a number associated with um, an item, and you might know that books have ISBN numbers. So this is a book that was written by a St. Peter's professor. Um, and say I was going to use this book in my research, I could, oops, actually go into Zotero and you will see an option to add item by identifier. Here you can enter a bunch of different identifiers. Um, ISBNs are the one I know the most because I'm a librarian. They're numbers associated with books. DOIs are digital object identifiers. I believe like almost every journal article and a lot of research is assigned a DOI now. PMIDs are PubMed IDs. So articles that appear in the medical database PubMed have PubMed IDs. Um, archive, I don't actually know how you pronounce this, but this ARXIV is a um, physics preprint database. They have their own numbers. So this is a way, um, and I don't know if you see, I put in that ISBN and immediately all this content on the right of my screen just appears in my Zotero. So in this case for a book, and I'll try to drag this out so you can see a little bit. For a book, it has the title, the author, the abstract, which you typically don't need for citation, but could be helpful. Um, and it has, you know, the publication information. So when you go to cite this book, you know, anything you would need Ryan? is there. Yes, and someone asked in the chat, sorry, if the recording will be available after the session. Yes, I'm gonna send the recording to everyone, everyone who is registered. Um, so you can also see how you can add notes um, to any of your references. So if you want, this is what I meant by notations. If you want to type a note in, um, useful to my second chapter, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever you want to put in, you can format it different ways. You can add notes. Um, you can add tags. Here's some suggested tags but um, tags are a way that you can, additionally to folders, you might have you know, articles that are in different folders, but have similar topics. And if you want to introduce them, you can, um, you can add tags to your reference. So those are some things that you can do. Uh, you can add your own tags. Um, you can connect related articles. I've actually never done this before, but if there's articles that are related and you wanna draw out those connections in your Zotero, you can do that too. So um, that is another way that you can do it. So this is an article written actually by a professor um, uh, Dr. Ghulam Bzell, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing her, her name well, who is um, currently helping with our, um, who is uh, administering our data science program at St. Peter's. She's amazing. And um, I 
brought up her article just to show how you could use this Zotero connector. So in the beginning, I talked about when you put Zotero on your computer, also put that web browser connector in. And mine doesn't have an icon up here, I think, because I have too much going on in my Chrome. But if I, if I click this puzzle and open all these different, um, I call them browser extensions, but all these things I've added to my Chrome, you'll see the Zotero connector. And if you click that, you see um, it will save, it's saving to my, um, and usually it gives you a choice. I don't know, it did it, did it kind of automatically then, but um, it will save it. Now let me go back to my Zotero. Oh, no, I don't see it. Hang on one second. Okay, well, it doesn't, <laughs> it worked very beautifully earlier, um, but it is not, it is not um, showing up currently. I don't know why that's not happening. I'll try another one, but I want to keep moving on so I can show you, show you some of the other ways to, uh, to share to RefWorks. So um, another thing you can do, like if you have, um, if you have an article where you're downloading the PDF, so this is one um, written by some other St. Peter's faculty in the business school, um, an experiment in mind mapping and argument mapping, you would download the PDF and you could try the Zotero connector, um, browser connector with this one too. But another method to do is to download the PDF, you drag it, and you can't see this because I have to change what screen I'm sharing, but um, I will show you. You drag it into Zotero and um, this is what popped up. So it takes the PDF and it's somehow the computer reads it and you can see it puts the PDF of the article, which is very nice because you can actually go back to the PDF. It puts the PDF of the article that you save, but it also puts all of the mid metadata, the volume, the issue, the page number into your, um, into your account. Okay, and the last method I wanted to show um, to share is something called a RIS file. Um, and you could also, you know, use the other methods I showed on a lot of databases. But if you're in a, in a database and you see site and you see something like this, RIS, I forget what it stands for, something information systems, it's actually a little file that has all the bibliographic information. If you click and download it, and then once again, just drag that file into Zotero and drop it. I have to change what I'm sharing to show you. It will put a little RIS file into your Zotero. It will ask you to import. Do you want to import it? Of course. And there you see it puts the, um, the reference into your folder. So I know that was sort of a lot, but um, the browser extension, I was using it so much before this workshop and it really does work great, especially if you're in some place like Google Scholar and looking at a bunch of um, open access research. Um, I recommend giving, giving that one a shot and uh, trying to, to use the Chrome browser extension to, uh, to find 
research. Almost any any article that you look up, from what I found, especially if it's open access. And let's see. I'm wondering if it wouldn't import that one because I had already done it. Uh, okay. And these are taking me to PDFs. So in these ones, let's see what happens when I use the Zotero connector. With the PDF link. So let me go back and see how that worked. And there it is. And it put, it put the PDF in there. I don't know if you can see all of this and it put the journal, the, some of the information, the title and the other authors in here. So you might want to go in, you know, if you wanted to, if this came all in uppercase, that's because it's pulling, you know, from the website, there's some things you might want to go in and edit, but that's basically um, how you use Zotero. And then, you know, any folder that you have, you can, um, export the collection. You can create a bibliography for the collection. I'll try to show you that. And then, um, and I will go in here. I'll show you what the, so I just created a bibliography from Zotero. I saved it in my documents and this is what it looks like. So I put it in APA format. You know, I didn't do any of this. It um, does all the indents, does all the formatting for you. So it's pretty nice tool that you can use like that. Um, now you can also use it um, in Microsoft Word. So when you sign up for Zotero, it will ask you if you want to add this um, connection to Word. So you can just say yes. Um, I'll also show you how you can do that after the fact. Um, but it, it connects with Word. You, you'll see um, up here in this, oh, don't do that. <laughs> in this menu bar, home, uh, I'm so not used to the new Word, but there's all these different fields. There's an option that says Zotero. Um, and I just pulled up like a random paper I, I worked on a, years ago that I had saved. If you wanted to add a reference, add a citation, um, you actually can draw on your Zotero database. So it will, oh no, don't ask me for help. Um, so um, you will start typing in a word from your Zotero. So say you wanted to cite um, one of the articles. So we, we know we added an article by Dr. Bazell um, and you click it and it will, I have it set up to do APA style and it will give you an APA citation. And I don't know if you're able to see this, but it um, puts in the APA citation as you're typing it. So it's pretty um, cool. And um, it does, uh, I know footnotes and endnotes as well. I can't pretend to have worked on that. And then if you're using the Word plugin, you can just um, add the bibliography at the end. Um, and it only put one citation because I only, I only put one parenthetical, but it will actually create a real bibliography based on the works you actually cited in your paper, if that, if that makes any sense. So it's another way to use the tool. And um, Yeah, you can change the citation style right in here. And you see, um, you know, they have a few styles uh, available there. So that is a uh, good old uh, Microsoft Word. And um, you can do a similar thing in Google Docs. So now I'm in Google Docs. If you just prefer using this um, to Microsoft Word, but if, um, I, I think it works pretty similarly. It's, it's a little different, but
but you go to add a citation and it's going to now, you know, try to integrate my account. Hopefully all this works <laughs> and it should, um, let's stick with APA. I like APA. It should allow me similarly to, um, yep, you could see I have a few articles. I was just typing an author I know is in my ref work. So as you're writing, if you were going to cite and it works. So that is another option. If you're more of a Google Docs than a Microsoft Word person. And that's mostly what I have to show as far as a 30 minute RefWorks show, uh, RefWorks, no, no more RefWorks. RefWorks is, is ceasing to be a St. Peter's service. But um, yeah, that's mostly what I have to show. I know um, sometimes faculty do, one thing I know faculty like about this is, um, and maybe this will be true for grad students too, if you go to the effort to write something all in a certain style, maybe for one purpose, maybe even our students writing dissertations, and then they go to submit it to a journal, it might be using a totally different style. So Zotero is helpful with that because you already have all the references saved. You just have to switch the style. Um, so people do ask faculty sometimes about some of these really unusual, let's say, styles that are um, available. And um, I, to add those or to find alternate styles, I know that you go to edit preferences and um, from there, you'll see all the styles they have available. And if you would like to write in a different one, you can add it to your Zotero here. They don't build the tool to hold 10,000 styles. I can't believe there's 10,000 styles, but evidently a lot of journals, and you'll see all of these journals have um, their own styles. And thankfully, they publish them in some format where they can be added pretty easily. So if you were going to publish in a journal, I think you would just, you know, start typing in the title here and um, you would see the style and then there would be a way to add that to your Zotero. I can't say I've ever used that feature myself because... Um, Are you guys doing over here? You um, did? I haven't used that. I, oops, somebody's unmuted. I haven't used that okay. feature a lot Give myself. Give me a second. Let me just double check with everybody else. I'm getting ready to end this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's, but you know, every style is there if you want to add them. And I don't know if, if anyone has any questions or anything I didn't touch on. I'm, I'm right under my 30 minute deadline for myself. That's good. Excellent. 30 minutes. Perfect. Yes. Round of applause for you. <laughs> Thank you, Professor.